When I first came here, I was so sure of myself. So sure I wasn't like the others. The others came to the land of sunshine with just enough money to live until the sun killed them. Take Helfrick across the hall, from Minnesota. Gassed in the Great War and gassed ever since. Most of the time, he has no idea where he is. So, I guess here's as good as anywhere else. Heilman's a bank teller from South Bend, but his health is bad and he was told he had to stay here or die. He hates the sun and the fog and the SC Trojans. My landlady's from back east. She tries to make the hotel lobby look like Bridgeport, Connecticut. No Mexicans and lots of doilies. Then there's the Filipino houseboy from Hawaii and the redhead from St. Louis. She's come to feel he's terribly brave in the face of so much prejudice. The other day when I was going to San Pedro looking for work at the canneries, I saw them. Even with high leather heels, he was a foot shorter than she was. I don't know where the girl in the red fox fur is from, but you can find her in Bernstein's fish grotto with a fresh one every week. On the other hand, there's the Japanese man who grows his vegetables down on Jefferson, near the sloughs. Bullet-faced and always smiling, he keeps me alive for a nickel. Of course, there are others too poor and too unlucky to be allowed to call any place their own. Even for a while. All right, amigos. In the end, we're all strangers here. Maybe the only thing that makes you a Californian is a pair of sunglasses and a four-bit polo shirt. Suddenly, you belong. Mr. Bandini? You have mail. Dear Mr. Bandini, with your permission, I shall remove the salutation and ending of your very long letter and print it as a short story for my magazine. It seems you've done a fine job here. I think the land of somewhere else would serve as an excellent title.